Perfect. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, so my name is James Baumhoff, and uh, myself and my colleague Elizabeth Jamison, we work for Water Survey of Canada, uh, which is part of Environment and Climate Change Canada. And so today I'll be giving you a presentation on uh, image velocimetry software that we're, that we're testing. So as an outline of the presentation, first of all, kind of give a basic plan of study how we're going about this project, uh, then talk about the fixed camera and drone deployments that we have. Uh, and then get into the software itself. The four software that we're testing, uh, basically our user impressions on the software and then look at some comparison measurements. <clears throat> so the plan study, uh, first off, we've um, procured a bunch of hardware. Uh, on the bottom left, this is the camera board that we've um, kind of developed in house. Uh, it basically has a data logger um, that we can attach a bunch of sensors to. That is connected to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, which then can control uh, one or multiple uh, cameras. And so we're uh, most commonly using the Axis uh, P1378 security camera, which is a 4K uh, resolution camera. And then all that data is stored on the Pi and then transmitted um, via cell phone service um, to an FTP site. Right now we're just transmitting all the videos to the FTP and then processing them on the desktop side. But our hope is that uh, we can actually do processing on this system itself. And then we've, uh, we're also taking lots of drone measurements using uh, just uh, DJI drones bought, bought off the shelf. So then the next step is to set up sites uh, and gather videos. So install ground control points, measure the cross sections, uh, and take a bunch of videos. And then we're getting lots of comparison measurements using uh, ADCPs, flow trackers, and we're also trying to install these, uh, at least our fixed camera sites, at places where there's uh, good stable dis uh, stage discharge curves. <clears throat> then the idea is throw that into a bunch of software uh, and see what combinations work best and see what comes out. So this is a map of uh, map of Canada and all the gauges in Canada. So all the um, gray dots are uh, different gauges we have across Canada. We operate about 2,200 uh, gauges and about 75% of them are solar panel uh, sites. Um, there's, there's no AC power available. And so the board that I was talking about is optimized to run on uh, off solar power uh, and in cold weather conditions. Um, the orange dots are our regional offices and so if you just look at some, we have some very remote sites where uh, it's a thousand kilometers away from a uh, thousand kilometers or more from, from a regional office. Uh, and a lot of them have only helicopter access. And so uh, the remote side of things is a key aspect of our operations. So the black dots are six uh, sites where we're testing image velocity symmetry or will be shortly. I'll highlight a couple here. Uh, the first one is the Pemberton River in British Columbia. And the second one is the Castor River uh, in Ontario, close to where we're located in, in Ottawa. And these sites are uh, operational from a fixed camera uh, point of view. And so um, I'll be showing you some results later on from these sites. Uh, COVID has delayed uh, deployment of other systems, but we're um, very close to getting four other sites operational. One is a very remote site in northern Alberta. Then we've also got some concrete channels for testing uh, in southern Ontario, and then another site in New Brunswick, or sorry, Nova Scotia. So you may have heard of uh, the Marvel Avengers. Well, we've assembled a crack team of optical velocimeters. Uh, so these are the software that we've uh, selected. We selected when we first started the project because they were the most popular at the time, and they all have uh, batch processing capabilities. So on the left here, we've got uh, Hydro STIV, and they've given us a one-year trial to uh, to test out their software. And then we've got uh, River, which stands for Rectification of Image Velocimetry Results. And we're just finishing up a contract with the developer uh, where the MATLAB-based version was recoded into Python and batch processing was uh, capabilities were added. Then uh, the third one is Fotrack, and Fotrack is more commonly known for their discharge app, uh, discharge cell phone app, and the discharge keeper, which is a standalone hardware uh, fixed camera image velocity setup. 
we purchased just the software from FOTRAC, uh, which is referred to as Discharge Lab. Uh, and so we're running that in-house and we'll be showing results from there. And then on the right side, uh, we've got food as, uh, LSPIV and we're running version 1.8.2, uh, which is just downloaded from their website. So now I'll share some um, kind of highlights of each software in alphabetical order. Uh, so first off, we have Discharge Lab and its home planet, uh, also known as operating system, is on Ubuntu, uh, which uh, is in, runs on an Intel-based processor. <clears throat> it uses surface structure image velocimetry as the algorithm to pull uh, velocities, oh, um, velocities from the uh, water surface. And its special powers uh, include, but aren't limited to, uh, first is it has the ability to have uh, many parameters, which um, allows for a lot of optimization when you're processing a video. Uh, it can, if you don't know what all those parameters uh, are, it uh, can be challenging for a inexperienced user. The other thing uh, that I really like about this program is it's the only program I've seen that uh, has multiple algorithms uh, that one can swap out depending on the conditions. So SSIV is the main default algorithm to extract velocities. But if uh, there's cases where we find that's not working, uh, you can just toggle a little button that says SPIV and it will swap that out with a uh, space-time image velocimetry algorithm. Uh, and that makes it fairly flexible. And then the other thing that I think is a strong point in the software is it has very good uh, horizontal and profiling mo profile modeling. As you can see, uh, the interpolation of all the velocity data across the profile in this screenshot. And the website for all the software that I'm talking about is uh, on the bottom right of the screen. So next up, we have Fuda LSPIV. Its home planet or operating system is on Windows and uh, Linux, uh, again, Intel-based processors. And it uses large-scale particle image velocimetry. And its special powers include uh, the fact that it's free and open source. And I think that contributes to a large user base. Uh, and it has the ability to process multiple transects at once, uh, which is nice um, because it gives you an average of the different transects. And then that also automatically gives you an uncertainty estimate, uh, which is very nice. And next up we have Hydro STIV. Uh, it runs on a Windows-based uh, environment, uh, Intel. And uh, it uses space-time image velocimetry as its algorithm. And I think one of its uh, great features is just how easy it is to use and the dynamic interface. Uh, the fact that you can play videos uh, while you're actually analyzing them to see the uh, different aspects uh, of the video is, is very nice. Um, and the workflow at the bottom is uh, very easy to use. I find that I'm, when I'm processing a video, I'll often start off with Hydro STIV first uh, just because of its um, ease of use and then go on to different software. And last but not least, we have River. And so it can operate on a uh, Windows-based environment in Intel chip, um, and also on the Raspberry Pi, uh, which it op the operating system is the Raspbian system. And so that offers potential for uh, deployments um, on, uh, on the boards we currently have, uh, at least the current iteration. Uh, like LSPIV, or sorry, like FUDA, it uses uh, LSPIV algorithm. And its special powers include uh, the fact that it's cross-platform. It's also freely available, uh, the MATLAB version is, and it has a very clear workflow. And again, the website is uh, here at the bottom. <clears throat> so now I'll show a, uh, some comparison measurements using the software. So this is the first site in Ontario, uh, an overhead shot. So, um, we have our gauge house here on the left bank and the camera is mounted on top of the, uh, on top of the gauge house on a pole. Uh, we installed six ground control points on the left bank and then six ground control points on the right bank. We've measured three cross sections uh, through there. Uh, the control is actually a weir that's um, uh, covered by the bridge right now. So you can't see it from this view. And then the flow is going from the bottom up. 
And so this is a shot from uh, the, the camera on top of the gauge house from this spring. You can see the ground control points we have installed and then they're hard to see uh, here. We have to dig them out when, uh, when they get covered in snow. Uh, so this shot was, I think, the day after uh, ice breakup happened uh, and we're getting lots of flow. So. Uh, so I'll be showing you some analysis from this spring. Uh, this is uh, the hydrograph at the site uh, from this spring. Um, so we've got uh, time on your x-axis, flow on your y-axis. Uh, we are reaching flow magnitudes of around 70 cubic meters per second. And uh, breakup happened around uh, March 12th. Uh, we weren't able to get to site till March 16th. And so there could be some backwater going on here. We, we know that it is, this site is susceptible to backwater in, in spring. Uh, when we got to site, we were able to confirm that there was no backwater. And so that's why I'm starting processing of the videos here, even though we do have a lot of data um, on, this, on this peak. And uh, I just selected one video per day to process, and that's where all the, the dots fall on. So we have about 50, 50 videos in this uh, segment. And so these are the results. Uh, the rated flow, so from the stage discharge curve, um, which, was, which we know is to be stable here, is on the x-axis. And the image velocity symmetry computed flow is on the y-axis. Um, and so the one-to-one -one line is this black line. If we have a perfect uh, rating curve and perfect uh, image velocity symmetry flows, all the dots should be on the black line. And then all the dots uh, are colored according to the software that they are processed in. So uh, Discharge Lab is a red square, Buddha is a green circle, Hydro STV is a blue triangle and uh, river is a purple diamond. Uh, and so thing that stood out to me when I first saw this is um, they all follow the uh, rate of flow fairly well. So it's, um, it's promising actually for, for all the software. Uh, these are trend lines just uh, going through the data. Uh, one thing I did notice is that uh, Discharge lab, the red line is biased high. Uh, the slope of the line is very close to the one-to-one -one line. And what I think is going on here is uh, it's just um, inaccurate parameter selection and that a more experienced user uh, would be able to bring this bias down. Um, so I think it's more a factor of uh, user influence than, than anything else. And indeed, I have seen vi other videos from this site process using Discharge Lab that are, are bang on. Um, so there's the, the user factor to uh, uh, consider in this as well. And so this is the, the relative error from all the same measurements. So we've got relative error in, percent, in percentage on your uh, y-axis and then the rated flow on your x-axis. Uh, with the trend lines going through the data as well. You can see how much scatter there is at the start at, at low flows, um, which is very common in uh, image velocity symmetry, where it's just harder to pick up the, the surface velocities. Um, and we found that for, you can kind of see that going on in, in all the software. Uh, so I put a cutoff at seven and a half cubic meters per second, and then just looked at the data above that. And these are the trends that you see. Uh, the dotted line is um, plus or minus 10% of the rated flow. Uh, and so a lot of the points are, are falling in uh, within that. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see actually what's interesting is that uh, FUDA and River uh, follow very similar trends uh, and they're both the LSPIV uh, algorithm. And so th these are those um, relative errors uh, sorted by the different software. So Discharge Lab had a median error of 17.7. And again, I think that can be brought down uh, with better parameter selection. Uh, FUDA had a median error of negative uh, 3.3, Hydro STIV 8.9, and River of 1.5. So those are the results from Castor River. And uh, running out of time, but so I'll quickly go through this. This is uh, Pemberton River, the other site we tested. Um, similar thing, we selected uh, freshet videos, two videos per day on this site, uh, much lower magnitude, only three and a half cubic meters per second. And these are the results uh, from there. Uh, again, similar findings. I think um, Discharge Lab was biased high and that could be brought down. Uh, these are the trends for that.
So because of time, I'm not going to show the uh, the relative error, but um, to show you that we're uh, we're looking at this at multiple sites. And so our next steps are to uh, bring those four more sites online and hopefully some more. Uh, capture more drone videos. Um, we have drone measurements that we've processed, but I didn't show anything here. Uh, that's also a, a use case where we're seeing. And then finalize requirements. This has kind of been an exploratory uh, phase to see what image velocity is capable of. And now we're going to compare that with our operations and see um, what our requirements are. And then we'll do a full evaluation of all these software. Uh, so that's it for my presentation. I'd uh, like to acknowledge all the people who've helped at Water Survey in this project, and then also all the software providers as well. My email is here at the top if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, James. A really excellent presentation. <laughs> Thanks for picking up from the, from the model that I got us into just before. But um, yeah, great. Does anybody have questions for James? Were there, uh, there were any questions in the chat? I don't think so. I mean, I have questions. I always have questions. I only fear that people get fed up of hearing my voice, but um, scatter at low flows, James. I, I, I understand why it happens, but um, have you any ideas on ways to improve that? Or is that just something that means that these methods perhaps aren't gonna be suitable for low flow measurements? Uh, you know, we haven't looked into it too much because I think the main use case we see for this technology is the higher floods and that the, the rating curves uh, are very stable and uh, fine at these low flows. And so I think typically uh, what we found here for um, even Pemberton is uh, we cut it off at 0 0.6 cubic meters a second and just use the rating curve for that. and. Um, so there hasn't been a big motivation into looking into that uh, further at this point. Yeah. Okay, and we have a question from Leonardo Mora. Um, do you plan to release the raw videos, make them public? Um, I think it's been mentioned earlier that it would be great to have benchmarking data for LSPRV and other methods. So, you know, do you have videos you can make available to the community that, that others can, can try to process? Yes, um, I'm, I haven't talked with Liz about it, but uh, I would be very keen to release all these videos, uh, all the corresponding stage, which we get from different sensors and the uh, rated discharge. Uh, the more people looking at this data, the, the better in my opinion. So yeah. I don't have a plan uh, exactly how to do that, but I'm very, very uh, uh, would, would love to do so. Yeah, I, I think if as a community, we can work towards having some kind of resource the sharing of videos and for the sharing of analyzed results that would be a really nice thing to achieve um just to, there's a, a point here from rolf um low flow equals slow flow counter by analyzing longer videos i think the problem is not so much displacement of features is it, it isn't it more that you just don't have features you know, if, if your primary feature is surface roughness and foam and stuff that's generated by by velocity and turbulence they're, they're simply absent. So it's not it's not simply a question that they're not moving far enough. It's it's more that, you, that there's nothing actually visible to trace. Would that be correct? Yeah, I, you know, I uh, forgot to um, put a video here. I wanted to put an image where it is flow at 0 0.6 cubic meters a second, just to show how little surface uh, texture there is. Um, yeah. We've kind of stayed away from seeding just because of the complications uh, that go with that. And the fact that we we want to be able to remotely trigger these things now i guess you can get remotely triggered uh seating uh stations but we haven't really looked into that um so yeah i think it's mainly a factor of surface texture 